that I gave you at the beginning of this week, that means yesterday, I particularly informed you that today is the beginning of your second learning contract, okay? Learning contract 002. That is the learning contract on self-regulated learning. Self-regulated learning, S-R-L. And if you ask me what is S-R-L, then in this very important teacher's message. I have given you a very brief definition. It's basically it include to develop in you four specific abilities to handle, or better say the ability to handle four specific areas of task management. We would like you to pay particular attention to the task management in each learning contract in the first learning contract, you know that you have to submit five items. First, the online journal. Second, the peer discussion forum detail. The third is the peer report. The fourth is your proposal. And the fifth is your meeting minute. So if you look at these four important points on task management, which is very much related to self-regulated learning, SRL, the first thing is task analysis. Task analysis. That means, do you have the ability to analyze what is required of you to get something done? What is required of you to get something done? That is task analysis. It basically requires you to analyze an assignment and what needs to be done. Okay? You look at an assignment, for example, learning contract number one, and now learning contract number two, and you determine what needs to be done. So in order to do that, you need to come up with a timeline. A timeline means how much time do I have to get this job done. In the second learning contract, compared to the first learning contract, you have three weeks. In the first learning contract, you have four weeks. So the timeline will compose, is composed of three different weeks. Okay, better say three consecutive weeks. From now to the very beginning of November. So you have three weeks to do your job in the second learning contract. So you need to break the task into manageable components, okay? You need to break the task into manageable components. Now in the first learning contract, your task has been broken into five different components. And all these five components are respectively submitted through five different submission links. So first, you need to be aware of how much time you have, three weeks this time, you need to develop the work into this free width, break the task into manageable components, and you have to establish your goals. You have some goals that, that compass. For example, what is required of you in the first learning contract is to develop your ability in inquiry-based learning, asking essential questions, discuss with your learning partner, come up with the discussion detail, write it in the report, okay, ask what lessons learned, okay? And now, you also need to establish a similar set of goals in the form of a framework of your learning objectives. And you also have to identify your audience. Who are you doing this for, okay? That, who are those people who need such information from you, all right? So you also have to recognize, recognize the similarity of the second learning contract with the first learning contract. What differs 
SRL from IBL, okay? So in the process of doing that, we need to come back to what you learned, not with an information literacy. You need to identify resources required to accomplish your goals in the second learning contract. You also need to plan your actions ahead so that you can achieve them, okay? So identify resources and then action planning, very important. These ability will help you to accomplish the task, including using your self-knowledge or something you want to learn in this second learning contract. Now it's very important that you can develop a plan of action to get your job done within the three weeks, particularly what you need in terms of resources that you have to get available from somewhere, library, intellect, whatever it is, and then you need to take action based on your planning, okay? Now you have your goals, your frameworks, you have your resources, you have action plan, so you need to take actions. So how do you take actions? If you look at point number three, basically what you need to do is based on your planning, map it into your timeline, ask yourself if the resources you identified earlier is good enough to execute your plan. And then you have to have a number of strategies in order to meet your learning class goals. Okay, and those strategies are what you need to learn in this second learning contract through SRL. Now, particularly speaking, you look at point number three, okay? What you need to do is you have a process, a process of getting your goals accomplished. In order to accomplish the goal, you always have to monitor your process and you also have to modify the same if necessary. That means if you know that you just have two days left, can you do in two days the work done in one week? You can't do it. So you have to modify your goal sometime, true. That means you have to update your plan. You do not rigidly follow your original plan, given the situations ahead. At the end of your work, you also have to come back to do assessment of your actions. Assessing your actions to see if it works for you, that means you revise your plan, you assess the situations, the earlier plan, to revise them, get the job done, to maximize what you can accomplish. And so, at the end of that, you need to do review of your outcomes and the effectiveness of the action taken. Now, these are steps that we do not talk. We did not talk about in the first learning contract. We just say that this is what you have to do. Uh, you need to come up with a topic. You need to write your journal using OIA. You need to discuss with your partner through his or your own set of OIA and we write a report. But in the process of doing all of these, you need to set your goals. You need to know how much time you have. You need to have an action plan for your work. Okay? And then you need to look at resources. Do you have the resources required to accomplish your goal? And then you need to monitor the process of accomplishing the goal. Do you need more resources? Or do you need to revise your plan because of some constraint? Time is wasted too much. You can't do, for example, in two days, the amount of work in seven days. So what do you need to do? You need to do review of your actions and look at the outcomes that will be possibly accomplished. So one, two, three, four. These four important areas of task management is what you need to learn on top of IBL in self-regulated learning. And you have three weeks time to learn them, okay? So that is the very important contact for the second learning contract, okay? And then, 
here at the end of learning contract number one in this teacher's message i have designed a student experience questionnaire for you to complete okay so make sure you complete this questionnaire as soon as possible i have given you one week's time to get it done but don't waste time it's better for you to get it done today particularly after you have submitted all the artifacts for learning contract number one so before the end of tomorrow and between today and the end of tomorrow help yourself to get those questionnaire done okay just 25 questions very simple you just need to check 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 okay you don't need to write a lot all right so and then in this teacher's message i've also given you some pointers about how you should position yourself in terms of getting your learning to comfort in this course okay i've given you some typical beliefs and behavior about successful students okay i said successful student accept personal responsibility that means what they see themselves as the primary cause of their outcomes and experience. Successful students discover self-motivation. They do not need a teacher's psychic in order to get it moving, okay? What they need is they find purpose in their lives by discovering personally meaningful goals and dreams. Now, in the second learning contract, you have a little bit more than the first learning contract looks the same but if you look at the reference subjects and exercise you can see the meaning of it and successful student master self-management one aspect of self-management is time management okay consistently you plan and you take purposeful action in pursuit of your goals and your dreams and of course the dream in this course is to get a name very much so I support you, okay? And then the last point here is very important. Successful student employ interdependency. That means you do not just rely on you as one person to do it. You at least have one learning partner. Now, towards the end of the second learning contract, as I mentioned last week, your pair needs to be merged with another pair to form a team. So you need to look for your team pair as your potential partner towards the end of this learning contract. Because starting in the third learning contract, you need to work in teams, okay? All right, so so much for that. What does it mean to employ interdependency? You build mutually supportive relationships that will help you achieve your goals and dreams in this particular class. Okay, we have technology in line in this context, but the way we would like you to go through this course is the first learning contract, learn the art of asking questions, inquiry-based learning. In the second learning contract, learn the art of self-regulated learning. All of these represent the essential components here of self-regulated learning. And finally, in this message, I just want to inform you at the end of calculating the polling of your class, you have decided not to keep the final exam, and you have decided to redistribute 20% of the final exam to classroom participation. So then, that means you better sign up to do your sharing, starting from now, okay? This week and next week, we are going to do it in pairs, okay? And actually, for the following three weeks, we're going to do it in pairs. And when the third learning contract comes, we're going to do it in teams, okay? So, it makes you sign up to do that. So, allow me to get back to week number five. This is the week when we have finished all the common modules. And so let's come to this particular week, number five. If you look at week.
week number five, the theme is self-regulated learning for three different weeks for week number six also and week number seven. And then the two topics we would like to inquire about is blocks, wikis, photo sharing. The topic one, the topic two is our essence, very simple syndication, podcasting, and so-so bookmarking. Okay, the six different topics we would like to explore. So let's try to pull things together because all of these have briefly been introduced in week number one. So let's see, uh, could you help me to distribute some paper so that uh, you have some paper to start with for today's work? Yes. Let's get some paper. Yes, please get some paper for your A5 pieces of paper. Yes, please get some paper. Thank you. Yes. So, may I suggest the two of you, uh, maybe you go to the, that table, because the two ladies there, uh, at least four. So, let me get you some pieces of paper so that you can throw the A5. Okay? So each one, it's okay if you have more than that, then you can just keep it and return, return them to me. Yes, let's get started with the papers. Um, before, I walked you through the review videos, okay? Let's go through the paper, throw it into A5, okay? Day, today is day number nine. Okay, day number nine. So in order to get started with day number nine, I'm going to go back to day number one. The week number one is day number one first. Yeah. Remember, uh, we have earlier used explaining web 2.0 video to help to understand it. So let us go back here and do it starting with blocks, okay? In this particular learning contract, one thing we're going to add into your learning contract's learning artifact is you need to write your own block. Now, in the first learning contract, that is somewhat like your individual report on your peer discussion. Okay, but in the second learning contract, that will become your block. Okay, that will become your block. All right, so let's go into the block. What is a block? You see the word, you see the website, and you need an app. And have you ever wondered, what's the big deal about blocks? This is blocks in plain English. To make sense of blocks, you have to think about the news and who makes it. We'll look at news in the 20th century versus the 21st century to make our point. In the 20th century, the news was produced professionally. When news happened, reporters wrote the stories and a tiny group of people decided what appeared in a newspaper or broadcast. Professional news was mainstream, general, and limited. The 21st century marked the point where news became both professional and personal. A new kind of website called a weblog, or blog for short, came onto the scene that let anyone be a reporter and publisher, often for free. As blogs became popular, they created millions of news sources that gave everyone an audience for their own version of news. Of course, we're using the word news loosely, but really, isn't everything news to someone? With a blog, a business owner can share news about his business. A mother can share news about her family. Or a sports star can share news with fans. These people are all bloggers. How did this happen? Well, blogs made sharing news on the web easy. Anyone with an idea can start a new blog with the click of a button and share news minutes later. Here's how blogs work. Blogs are websites that are organized by blog posts. These are individual news stories, like articles in the paper. Bloggers simply fill out a form like this one to post a news story. With the click of a button, the blog post appears at the top of the web page, just above yesterday's news. Over time, the blog becomes a collection of these posts, all archived for easy reference. Also. Each blog post can become a discussion through comments left by readers. Blogs make the news a two-way street. But really, the fuss is not about how blogs work. 
It's about what people like you do with them that matters. Let's say you have a blog about green living and outdoor photography. It reflects your unique perspective. This helps you build relationships with your readers and other bloggers with similar interests. Speaking of relationships, bloggers often work together. In addition to comments, you'll read each other's posts, quote each other, and link your blogs together. This creates communities of bloggers that inspire and motivate each other. Whether it's their ease of use or the opportunities they offer, blogs have been adopted in a very big way. Since 2003, there have been over 70 million blogs created, each with its own version of news. So the big deal about blogs is that they gave people like you the power of the media and created a personal kind of news that appeals to a high number of small audiences. So, it's up to you. What will you do with this new power? There is likely a group of people out there who want to hear what you have to say. You can search for blogs using Google's blog search or Technorati. You can also start your own blog for free at blogger or wordpress.com. I'm Leila Fever, and this has been Blogs in Plain English on the Common Craft Show. I guess, I guess you must have got some ideas of what the blog is all about. These four friends are going on a camping trip. They need to bring the right supplies because they're backpacking. The group needs to plan and plan well, so coordination is key. They're all computer users, so they start planning with an email. It's not a point, but then becomes a barrage. Email is not good at coordinating and organizing the group's input. This is the old way. Boo! The important information is scattered across everyone's inbox. This isn't coordination. Let's start over. There is a better way. It requires you using a website called a wiki. Using a wiki, the group can coordinate their trip better. This is the new way. Yay! Most wikis work the same. They make it easy for everyone to change what appears on a web page with the click of a button. It's as easy as erasing a word and rewriting it. The buttons are really important. There are two that are essential. They are edit and save, and they are always used together. Let's see them in action. Here are our camping friends, and this is a wiki website. Like all wikis, it has an edit button. Clicking this button transforms the web page into a document. All you have to do is click it and the web page becomes a document ready for editing. Editing the page means you can add or remove words or change how they look, just like writing a letter. Once you're finished editing, you click save and the document becomes a web page once again and is ready for the next person to edit it. Easy. Edit, write, and save. Using this process, a group can coordinate more easily. Let's apply this to our camping friends who need to bring the right supplies. Mary signs up for a wiki site and then sees the new site for the first time. She clicks the edit button to get started. She creates two lists for camping. What we have and what we need. Under we have, she lists the things she will bring. A cooler, stove, and flashlight. Under we need, she lists items that others need to bring. Compass, lighter, water, and food. She finishes the process by clicking save and the website now has lists for the camping trip. Now it's John's turn. John visits the wiki website, clicks edit, and the page becomes a document ready for him to make changes. John volunteers to bring food and water, so he moves those to the half column. He also realizes the group will need a knife and rope. Once he's finished, he clicks save, and the wiki is ready for the next person. Henry visits the wiki, clicks edit, and he can edit the page. He remembers they need a tent. Henry saves the page, and the wiki is ready for Frank. Frank edits the page and agrees to bring the remaining items, completing the process. Frank saves the page and realizes something awesome. The group has created the perfect camping list without email. Yay! But wait, one thing is missing. They need a location for the campsite. The wiki can help with this too, but another page is needed. John visits the wiki and clicks edit to edit the page. He types in the word locations and highlights it. He then clicks the link button. This changes the word locations into a link to a new page. John clicks save and next, Frank visits the wiki and sees the list and the link to the new page. He clicks on the locations link and arrives at the new page. This new page enables the group to use the same edit, write, save process to coordinate locations. This process can be repeated over and over. These three buttons, edit, save, and link, Make it possible to organize a great camping trip or create the world's biggest encyclopedia. You can sign up for your own wiki at these websites.
Okay, um, it's very interesting. I do not intend to show you the wiki, but because it's what it's secret, so you got the wiki immediately after the blog. But anyway, that is a very interesting mishap. Think a little bit more about what you have learned from the blogs in Pregnant What is the blog? What has the blog transformed our life today? Do you keep a blog? Yes. No. Do you read a blog? No. no. Okay. Do you know what is meant by a blog? At this point, you got some idea. Now let's focus on the block. So what exactly is a block? A block is a means for each one of us living in today's internet world to publish something of our own to the whole world to see. So you can publish something of your own that you believe it's great for everybody, every day. Through some kind of blogging platform, okay? Which is right there for us to use. When you look at the blog story over there, where did it begin? What was it all about? Which work do you remember the most? News, yes. Traditionally speaking, when we look for news, where do we go? 6.30 news. Yes, professional. From the news agency, from the newspaper, from the news station, TV station, radio news, TV news. Okay? But today, a new generation of newsmaker came into phrase ever since we have the blogs. You can be an independent reporter and you write the news blog every day. So when we look at what's happening in Hong Kong those weeks, besides reading the news from the established channels like the TVB news, the ATV news, or whatever news, or RTHK news, or from the newspaper, we sometimes go to read more of the story from independent news reporter. They are writing the news blog, make it available to us, and even using video to document what's happening for us to see. So that is something that has transformed the news business today. But the question is, are they reliable? Now this is another question. But does it have anything to do with the block? For example, if one day, this is a very professional group of business people, and they would like to let you know something about their company. And so they decided that every week they're going to publish a block about the company. So that if you want to know something about their four-person company, you come to read the blog once a week. And then, because the company is so popular, people cannot wait to read it once a week. They require or they request all of you to publish a blog every day. So you publish a blog every day to release some news about your company. So you have a daily blog instead of a weekly blog. So that it's a blog about a company. And if it's a blog about company news, we call it a corporate blog. Is a blog whose nature is to broadcast to the world something about a company. So, have you ever gone to the Apple's company's blog? Yes. When you're looking for when the iPhone 5 is going to be released? No? Okay. Have you ever gone to the blog of a government agency? Have you ever gone to the blog of the White House to read something written by Obama or something like this? No? Okay. So, anyway, you are going to get in touch with the block. Because in the second learning contract, at the end of your discussions with your learning partner, each one of you in your pair is obliged to write a block. Okay? And instead of a block in the first learning contract, that is your 
peer discussions report. Okay? So, normally, um, we invite each pair to write a blog every week, okay, for three weeks' time. So, you should produce three different blogs, one following the other, okay? So, and then it's how you report on individual um, um, understanding of a topic that you choose for discussion sake. So the second thing you learn from this second video is called a wiki. Okay? What is a wiki? And how does it differ from a blog? Remember the wiki? They show you a couple of people, they are planning for a camping trip, and then the guy who introduced you the wiki tells you instead of writing email to one another, they use the wiki to keep one another in touch. Now think a little bit more about this. If you are going to use email, say to keep four persons in touch, all right? So one person send an email to three other persons with a CC to himself, okay? This is one way to broadcast a message. Now, each one of these three persons might have an idea of what to bring in a camping trip. So each one of them is going to reply to the first email by going to the other three person and CC to himself. This is how the other persons could respond to a particular email, right? Now then, what if these persons now are reading the two would like to add his or her own? So he is going to send the other three an email with a CC to himself. Do you see the connections with email? So in order to avoid this kind of complicated going to email to many different people, when you saw the wiki video just now, you suggest that instead of using email, we can just come to use a wiki when each one of the four could be on the wiki together. And when they are on the wiki together, which is basically a web page, each one of them is able to add something into the wiki that is immediately visible to all the people. So they don't need to send email directly for something simple. It was just like all of you are now sitting in a circular table. So when one person writes on a large piece of paper or on top of the table, all the other three can see it very clearly. And if you have an idea, you can add immediately on top of the table, and the rest of you can read it. Now, if each one of you is sit on a different table, what you need to do? If you have an idea, you go to the first table with the first person, and then you go to the second table with the second person, you go to the third table with the third person, and come back to yourself. And then you go to another table to collect an idea. How many times you need to go around it? This is somewhat like a wiki is like a table with all the four persons on board, instead of sitting each of the four persons on one table, and you need to bring the message to each of the table. So that is very interesting. Now, in a Moodle environment, we do have the blog, and we also have the wiki. So we are going to use the blog and the wiki in the second learning contract. Okay, now, get ready your piece of paper. We are now putting the use of blog and wiki in the context of higher education. I would like you to capture the message. Let's go back to week number five. Here we go. We would like to look at our very short video, about six minutes, which talks about the use of blogs and wikis in high education, just like in a college and classroom. And I would like to introduce you this guy. Hi, my name is Jeremy Freeberg. They're used all the levels of but my background is health doctor, genetics, and teaching at the university level. 
So what I'm going to talk to you about right now are two web-based technologies that I've used in my teaching that have been valuable in of courses and really just very efficient way to communicate with my students and open the course. The two technologies are wikis and blogs. And they're both web-based technologies and functionally they're different types of websites. Um, and they can be used in a variety of ways, but it's really the technology use it and you deploy it once you're kind of content you work. The first one I'll talk about is a wiki. And very basically a wiki is a is a website. It's a website that is very easy to create and manage. But what's exciting about a wiki is a website that when you build it, you can build collaboratively. And so a great example of this is Wikipedia. You go into Wikipedia, there's tons of content on there. Very easy to get a hold of. The beautiful thing about it is that everybody is Anybody can add content, revise pages. And when you take a concept like that, a platform like that, you apply it to your class or your course, you often have a tremendous amount of information which is unique to meet your, your reservoir of content for your students. So a wiki is a way that you can build that content and start to be small. You're a to add to it. You can have your grad students add it. You can have students within your class actually adding and building the bottom line. And it's a way to actually grow your, your, your content base, your resource assets that you need in the class when you talk to Now, one other really nice feature about Wikipedia is, it, or a oh, wiki in your case, the ability to hot link. So within a body of text, um, let's say you talk about genetics, my background is about genetics, um, and you come across a paragraph in the paragraph the word DNA. That word DNA can be linked directly to another page. That deals just with DNA. Within that page, we have a lot of things that go other things. So, what the exciting thing about Wikipedia and why it's a very valuable tool as opposed to, let's say, Google, is that you have a way to have non linear interactive content. You want to start with page one, page two, one, you can go in any direction with content. It's a fast, efficient way to gather resources and information. So, take your course. You can have all of your support. You can have your course syllabi, you can have all kinds of administration to administrate the content your students need, and they can work through the content in a, in a very efficient way and even build that into it. Now, another technology that can be built into the wiki or alongside it is the concept of a blog. And a blog is very much an information delivery tool. And generally, it is in one way. And there are lots of blog technologies really available online, like Wikipedia. Um, and blog technology, you can sign up with a lot of these sites and create a website for you automatically, customize the look. And most universities will have some kind of blog capabilities built into their systems. So I encourage you to, to, to check with your IT departments and see what, to, what service you're going to have to But basically, blogs are a way for you to communicate with your students. And a great example of this is new, news items. Let's say you have multiple blogs, you're teaching a um, course in Japan. You could be having a daily news item that you can talk about things that are happening. So every morning, once a day, once a week, we type it up to you. You can add a piece of content to your blog. And then your students can then go to the blog site and see the posting that you're making. This news item, this hot topic, we're having an exam next whatever you want. It's a one way linear uh, path to disseminate information. Uh, the other nice thing about blogs is that. They're a great creative tool, and we see all kinds of examples of this online. People using blogs to provide community. And so, in, in the courses that I've taught, I've used blogs not just as an information delivery tool, but as a way to let my students be creative. Instead of writing that report, that lab assignment, I can get them to care for the blog for a period for the semester, the three months that we're dealing with the subject. They can actually take a topic and they can follow up with what's happening in the world, what's happening with the research, and post items on that blog. And in some blog, some blog software, you can have other people contact each other on the first So it's a way for you to let students explore a topic, concept, something that happened to you in the class. And it would be and it's public. It's published over there. And you can grade it in that respect. You can see what they're writing. You can get, get some kind of a sense of their understanding of what you're doing in a level of, of integration. So in terms of using these technologies, we do all kinds of things with 
Wikis take a little bit of time to learn how to actually enter code. Um, it's not really entering code, it's enter information, but if you want a title, you have to put a couple of symbols around the text to say this will be the title, this will be the body here, but you have to be the your belt, you can easily pick up, and you can just go with it, and you'll be able to Blogs, on the other hand, are very, very easy to set up. You can really log in and sign up to create your accounts, and you're adding text, links, and images, whatever you want, and it's very much um, right out of the box, and you're ready to go. So I encourage you to explore the oldest technologies with tons of information online, but they have a dramatic impact on how you manage and organize your last content. It also allows your students to interact with the in a way that Frankly, we're very comfortable with Okay, um, all that we experience a little bit of the technical problem towards the end of this video. Now let me pose this very simple questions to you so that you can have a simple and just in time table discussion for five minutes. We have done something on journaling in the first money contract. And then we have done something on peer-based discussion using the discussion forum. These are mainly the two important tools we are using in the first learning contract. And in this class, very quickly, we brought you into the world of blogging. We introduced you something about blogs, which is not difficult to understand. And immediately, we also give you the idea of wiki, which is somewhat like a website in which all of us could jump into it and do something together. And actually, we're going to use both blogs and wiki in the second learning contract. Now, this is the question. What is the relationship between using a journal and a peer discussion forum? Now, you should be able to answer this question because we did it last Friday. Now, think of it. Further, what is the relationship between a journal and a blog? Okay, what is the relationship between a blog and a wiki in the context of our learning? All right, particularly speaking, in the perceivable learning activities in the second learning contract. Now, use five minutes time to think about the relationships. Because if you cannot figure out why we're doing it, it might be a little bit difficult for us to convince you. Why do we need to do that? So what is the relationship between a journal and a block? What is the relationship between a block and a wiki? Alright? And sure, you should be able to understand the relationship between a journal and a peer discussion forum. You have five minutes time to come up with some relationships.
just ask my questions uh, to help my students understand the relationship between the different tools, Web 2.0, the journals, the forum discussions, the blogs, and the wikis. For me, they can work out some relationships. Why do we need to use those tools in the context of my learning here in this course? And this is very important. Let's see what you go to the answer. Here we go. Uh, two minutes left. Actually, not two minutes. It's one minute. Just try your very best to express the relationships that you can perceive. Okay? It's very important that you try to put things together. Okay, here we go. Can we ask the boys at the table? Help us to understand some of your interpretations. Introduce yourself, please. Thank you. Hi, my name is William. Thank you, William. And I think in general, okay, I can write some idea after we take the topic. Okay. And then for is share some information to my friends. Yes. And family. Yes. And so on. And wikis is share some information to each other in the world. Yeah. Okay. So yes, I like the word share. Yes. Uh, we use the block to share something. So it's very good. But in order to share that something, we need to do what? In, in the context of a block, okay, we need to do what? Publish the block. Yeah. Publish the block to the world, right? Discussion. Yes, discussions. Uh, to publish the block, and normally in today's um, block, 
after you've published something, you can always have a feedback at the end. So people can discuss with you. Yeah. But what, what about the wiki? Can you tell us more about your wiki? Wiki? Yeah. Interpretation with the wiki? Could your table mem members help? It's okay. Uh, you can try to pass the microphone to a table. You believe they can help. Yes? So what about wiki? Can you help them to understand the meaning of wiki uh, in relation to a blog? Uh, I think that wiki can help us and help group to work more efficiently. Okay. Because you can actually write something and if the other person don't like it, you can delete, delete it and write on something else or yes. something more useful. Yes. Uh, I think that's the question. Yeah, thank you, Joe. That means you can enable a group of persons to do some writing together, right, with a wiki. Thank you. Could you pass the microphone to a table of your choice? No, you don't pass the microphone back to the table. Yes? Okay. <laughs> So you still have two tables here. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Yes, you can pass to David. Yeah. Dave, can it help us to understand your interpretation of what a journal or blog is? Uh, I think journal is um, a kind of article that's um, further connected to yourself. Okay. And you can put something about your life, uh, like a traveling journal. Uh, but uh, the blog uh, is um, something different. Okay. Uh, you can post some other things which is not about yourself. Oh, so okay. Like some news or some uh, story you pick out or some information you want to tell others. Okay. So, I think so can we say that a journal is a private notebook? No one is going to read my journal because it's private to me. But the well, blog is up to you if you okay. want to be open to others. Okay. So, but but normally, uh, can I say something? A journal is default to be private. It can also yeah. be opened up to others, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but a blog is default to be public to others. Yeah. But you can also keep a blog to yourself. This is what the Moodle environment blog is all about. Okay. Wow. Thank you, David. You, you did a very good job. So. Uh, could you pass the microphone to? Is it help us understand the relationship between the block and the wiki? Hi, Sandra. Hi. Uh, the relationship between a blog and a wiki is that you both, well, the blog you post information and okay. then you publish it to the world. Yes. And then the wiki is more of like when you, you're in a group and yes. then like in the video and you want to work together more like better, then yes. you can share and edit the information collaboratively. Yes. But that is related to the blog because you can also do that for a blog. You can co collaborate with other people to create a blog. Okay. And for the blog, you can uh, gain feedback through the comments, yes. but for the wiki you can't because you're sharing it. With All right. People. So actually we can have a group block, right? Yeah. Group blocks just we can do it collaboratively. Uh -huh. That's very good indeed. Thank you, Ms. Andrew. So let's go to the last two tables. Yes. Uh, <laughs> thank you. So. Help us to understand your interpretation of the journals, the blogs, the wiki, or even the discussion forums. Introduce yourself. Um, um, journal and the blog, um, the same is similar. Is on, uh, journal only can be edited by the own self, 
Okay. And the block and come from the world of red blockchain. Okay. They always and individual or group of the individuals. In, in simple terms, the block is an online journal. Oh, yes, very and interesting. The difference and the journal and the block and the attitude on the block can share with the people. All right. And the block and the wiki. And wiki is type of the web page that uh, always anyone with the, in the internet and okay. connection to the wiki and to the wiki. Okay. And block and can eat and save by oneself. But wiki is open to everyone who can eat and save. Okay. Yes, but it could also be a closed system indeed. Uh, you have to have some accounts to log in, like the Wikipedia. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much. So lastly, we come to the ladies' table. So, who's going to help us understand more? Yeah. Introduce yourself, please. Uh, hello, my name is Jonana. Um, okay. After Joanna. each group, <laughs> and uh, sharing, um, let me have a conclusion. <laughs> That's good. Um, and in my way, rock is. Um, um, if you upload a news or your sharing, your fan can comment with you, but uh, they cannot edit your sharing. Um, channel is um, is your own sharing, uh, but uh, you can set it privacy privacy up to you. Um, I think Wiki is. Our web page. If we have same interested topic, or you want to write together with your member, we can upload on Wiki. Each one can edit the topic or add some idea into the Wiki. Share some idea and publish into the blog. Uh, publish into the Wiki. Okay. People can discuss the topic and. We can writing the topic together. Yes. That's very good. Yes. Thank you, Thank you Joanna. So we did have a one round of very effective discussions on journals, discussion forum, blogs, and wiki. Um, though I do have the feelings that we need to enhance our understanding of how we can use wiki in the classroom. So I have prepared something for you. Very interesting videos on wiki um, as the dialogical classroom. So let's try to see if we can use some time here to learn about wiki. Short presentations about innovation and teaching in college education at the University of Georgia. I'm Lloyd Reaper, a professor in the learning design and technology program and director of innovation and teaching and technology for the college. In these episodes, we showcase ways in which instructors in our college are creative and innovative in their teaching, often using existing and emerging technology in new and interesting ways. Besides recognizing the innovation already being practiced by our college's faculty and instructors, we hope that these creative ideas and strategies will motivate and inspire others to take risks in their teaching and to take full advantage of the affordances of technology. Hello, welcome to my talk of Wikis and uh, Dialogical Classrooms. Before I get too deeply into Wikis, uh, what I want to talk a little bit very briefly is sort of my history with technology in classrooms. And um, as a high school English teacher, I was always looking for ways for my students to engage with the work and collaboratively construct information uh, and not see me as a uh, main purveyor of information. So I discovered flip chart paper. Uh, and used to literally paper the walls of my room with all the information students would generate in groups. Um, and that was handy and useful, uh, but it was also constrained in that students could only access that information when they were in the room. Uh, and uh, you can only put so much information on the flip chart paper, so they'll be able to see it from a distance. Uh, so when I came to university, I uh, still used a lot of flip chart paper in my classes, but the larger constraint of university is that it's not my room. 
uh, that I don't, uh, I don't have a room that I teach in all the time, that other people share the room, and I felt it was kind of rude to keep all my stuff up and there's a premium of wall space, and I've always pulled down the chart paper and taken back to my office, and unless I remember to bring it to the next class or something like that, that's where it was like once done. Uh, so it didn't have as much of an effect as I would have liked in that we used it for that bit of information during that class time, but didn't have it. And so I was looking for something else that I could use. And, and luckily, uh, I, I was teaching with a number of teachers uh, uh, for the Red Clay Writing Project. We were doing a special seminar on, uh, on technology, particularly Web 2.0 uh, technology and classrooms. And it was there that I found out about Wikis. Uh, and I just saw this as, as an incredible way to keep students engaged outside the classroom and get students involved in a variety of ways within the classroom and hang on to information and that information be carried over and be something that truly is co-constructed and created together. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what we're we get some definitions together. Uh, for example, what is a dialectical classroom? And, and from my stance, it's one in which literacy is used to immerse teachers and students in an ongoing reflective conversation with the text of their lives. What I mean by that, to immerse teachers and students, is, is to truly see uh, that kind of classroom, a uh, dialogue classroom, is one where teachers and students are co-constructive knowledge, where they're learning together, uh, where the teacher doesn't have all the answers, and where a lot of questions are raised that, that fascinate the teacher as much as the students. So everyone's immersed in learning together uh, and figuring things out. Um, and then in an ongoing reflective conversation is to, again, to get students to constantly think and rethink. And, and I, I say in my classes, uh, you need to wobble. What I mean by that is uh, you need to call other X, other people in the question, but you also need to call your own beliefs in the question. You need to bring a certain amount of wobble to, to your learning. Uh, and so, so it's an ongoing reflective sense of where, of where things are. So um, learning is always a process, and understanding is always a process. So it's always a dialogue. And finally, with the text of their lives. When I say the word text, I'm talking in very large ways. Uh, sure, printed uh, material is text. So is art. Um, so is music. Uh, so is uh, me standing here talking to you on a video paper, a, a DVD. Uh, it's the same thing. Uh, that text of our lives, everything that we encounter and that we try to make meaning of. So that's a biological classroom. It's one that's very much in process, one where understanding continues to develop over time. Uh, so it was a wiki. Um, and according to Wiki, Wikipedia, we'll have to trust on this one, uh, it, it's a website that allows creation and editing. Okay? Um, it, it's, it's, Basically, for me, when I look at it, it it's an easy to access web thing. Um, you don't need to know WordPress to do it. You don't need to know HTML to do it. Anybody can go from Wiki and click information up there. It goes by WYSIWYG, and what you see is what you get usually. Um, and so it's a great way to have something look kind of professional and solid, uh, but yet still be in process. Uh, and just for those who like to know, we can come to the white word for fast, again, I'm trusting. Wikipedia on that one. But what does Wiki mean to me? What, 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 what do I see powerful about it? I think the important is 24-7 access to the content on the class. Whatever we do in class, it, uh, students can get to it as long as they have a computer. For most of my students, they have a computer. So, and if they can't, they can get one from the library. Uh, so the information is there. So whatever we construct, they don't have to wait until they have class to get to see it. They have it. Uh, it's right there for everybody. Um, I see the opportunity to extend my class, uh, get, to get me on to face to face. Uh, it's particularly powerful, as you see, I have students doing dialogues ahead of time where they write about the reading of the course. They're due a day ahead of time, and I don't plan my class until I read those. Uh, so when they come in and read those um, uh, selections, I gather the questions that they've created, the issues that they've raised, and I incorporate that into the lesson plan. Uh, so, so it's, it's a way to get beyond those three hours, and also a 15 sessions. I just had a student ask me, uh, well, is the wiki going to stay up? And I said, yes, the wiki's there if you get access. So any time beyond this class, if you want to get back to the information, or add to the information, it's there for you to get to. Um, I think it's a space where students can take to share the ownership, 
where they start seeing that the learning it really helps to cement that idea that we're co-constructing knowledge is just not me giving the information. I certainly have my input and I don't shy away from that. But students also get the learning input, they learn from each other, and anything all the way to is there because I help with it there, but they help with it there and do it together. And finally, as I mentioned, the dialectical classroom should remain in process. So, so with you, the works basically remains in process. It's, it's, it's nothing solid about it. Uh, we'll go back and change things. Like everything's uh, a work in progress in this. But we keep using it that way. Uh, and we're visiting the class and class. So particularly uh, with the Bakin thing, you'll see there's a lot of new vocabulary or jargon that Bakin uses. So we've been defining that over time, and I can go back to it over time and see how, what we can add to that. So just for today, the focus of this talk is to provide a glimpse into the ways that wikis can support dialogue and also to help to sustain an ongoing dialogue. Let me just stop the video at this particular slide. And I would like you to see if you remember what this professor said with the last slide, with a particular phrase that called the ownership for the students. With the use of wiki in the classroom, which is a process ongoing, and what he means is about conversations between the teacher and the students to engage in constant learning about something which could only be discovered more with more of the engagement from both sides. Okay? So he's just getting into the focus of this talk. Now let's take a look at the two points he provides here concerning the use of wiki in classroom. The first one is to provide agreements into the ways that wikis can support dialogue in classrooms. Now what is meant by dialogue? When we talk to one another, when I speak and I wait for you to tell me if your point of view is okay or my is understood, then the other student will also engage in the dialogue. So it's a classroom which is instead the teacher always giving you a lot of the information so on one side. We got questions, feedback from students constantly throughout the period. The second thing is to sustain. Sustain, keep going, means keep going. An <coughs> ongoing dialogue about technology and practice. Now these two important focus, that is the purpose of this professor's talk to demonstrate how wikis could accomplish that. So let us try to see how we can do that. We in a classroom, which is well set for dialogue, conversation in this table, we try to give you a chance to express yourself, and inside the table, you've already got enough conversations going, but what we need in terms of dialogue is this table talk to the other table, and the other day will talk to one another. So I'm trying to see if we can accomplish something like this. Uh, not in this class because we have one hour of time. But when we come back on Friday, remember, beside one or two uh, over there, you're going to do it on Friday, sharing, right? And I'm waiting for more sign up on Friday. I would like to see if we can do something like this on a table uh, by table discussions. So if we have one, two, three, four, five, six, that's very good. That means we try to get two tables talking to one another, okay? With three pairs of two tables on Friday on the topic that we're going to continue. But you need to watch this video at home. Okay, watch this video and help to get the whole idea first. And so when we come back on Friday, besides using the basis of this video, we are going to have some dialogue. First, within a table, then I cost two table, and then three sets of two tables together. All right? So that will be very interesting. And the topic we are going to talk about, of course, um, you need to select on your own truth because if you look at this week's topic, 
They are topics that are very operational. That means teaching you how to start a blog in the blogstar.com. They are also very good topic called promoting collaborative learning using wikis. That is a very good topic. If you look at this video, it's about 40, 40 minutes, okay? And then there's a topic called wikis in university teaching and learning from New University of New South Wales in Australia. And there is also the teaching 2.0, doing more for less. Now, it's really up to you, okay, individual table, because I believe you will sit together like that again on Friday. So it's up to each table to choose one topic, that video on your own, you watch it, okay? So when you engage a table, per table dialogue is one table introducing to the other table the specific video of the choice. Okay? On Friday, I'm going to ask you per table, we have six tables here, which video have you chosen because we have enough here. Okay? So we will have a dialogue going on to discover the potential of Wikipedia. You will see here, very interestingly, instead of saying blocks and collaboration models for active learning, we use wikis. That means wiki. It's something you need to pay attention to. It's very useful. Okay? So, so much for this very simple take home, watch the video exercise. Alright? So, it's good for you to discuss within a table with. Some minutes, unfortunately, you do not have computers on the table today. Not only I see some computers here. But you, you have to do it on your own as a table, which video you choose to watch before you come back on Friday. Okay? And so when you are back on Friday, you should have watched the video at home for done some points of discussion. Particularly, remember how it's wiki used in that context to support the purpose there. For example, is that Wiki a platform for innovation in the classroom? How innovative is it? You have to bring out a point. If you say promoting collaborative learning using Wiki, then you have to explain how Wiki could promote collaborative learning. Okay? If you say Wiki is a collaborative models for active learning and how active learning can be supported. So something like this, but not all, you don't need to uh, be bothered with all. You have to bring out the main point because if your table is going to talk to the other table, you have to give them enough information, just like when you talk to your learning partner, the OIA, all right? And this table also gives the, same, the other table the same set of information of your topic, all right? So that will be very interesting. And then I'm going to show you, definitely, on Friday, how we are going to use Wiki for the UN Moodle site. But today, I just want to bring you to the blocks, okay? If you look at the Moodle environment, right here, do you see there's something on your right-hand side that is called the block menu, okay? The block menu is available to each one of you when you come to the block. The way to create a block is very simple. You just do an add a new entry, click this, and you will be presented with an added of blocks. You type the title and you type just as you type in your journal. And then you save it and you publish it. And some of the options is you publish it only for yourself. It's only you can read it. For the other, you publish it for anyone. That means you publish it for the whole class. That is the block function in the UI Moodle environment. And definitely, when you read something on week number five, they are also giving you enough instructions on how you can create a block and card under Google Blocker. Okay? That is very useful. So, so much for these very simple instructions. Let's come to attendance for today.
Vicky, are you here? Thank you. Tiago, thank you. Count Lai, thank you. Cecilia, thank you. Juliana, thank you. Yat Le, thank you. Um, Yen, are you here yet? Thank you. Kay, thank you. All right. Jason, thank you. Hita, Hita, thank you. Josh, thank you. Uh, Jongman, thank you. Karen, thank you. Misandra, thank you. Safiro, thank you. Ladia, thank you. Ji Yin, thank you. Yong Ling, thank you. Wayne, thank you. Mario, thank you. Joe, thank you. Jerry, thank you. Kenny, is not here today. Richard, okay. Davy, thank you. Thank you very much. May I invite you and also remind you to complete the student experience questionnaire for learning contract number one. It's very important that you give me your information because I can change a lot. If you let me know, okay? There's something about this course I want to make sure that it's conversational. All right? It's your course. All right? So do a good job. You have until actually when I check the submission link tomorrow evening at 11 to submit your work. Yeah, 16. Okay? So if you have not done the work, Try your very best to submit your work. Remember, if you do not submit anything, you do not have any point. If you submit something, you have points. Okay? Can I answer your question? Yes, because the submission link said 16. If I said 16 over there, it's okay. Then one more day. Alright? Alright? Okay, go ahead. Do your very best. Good work. Make sure this is the beginning of certain learning contract. The emphasis here is set the goal, time yourself, alright? So don't waste your time, just three wins for this second learning contract. First day, last day. It's okay, it's okay, don't worry.
一大堆，就好像就好像你是晚餐那些。